our lectures. Again, I'll just choose um I'll just choose one, no? Uh sa tanan na sections para dili daghan kaayo. Um and yeah. So maybe ang um, Saturday ka to Friday Saturday classes na ko kay 3 hours 3 hours sila so at least 2 videos lang maximum para dili kay daghan mong lantawon. Okay? All right, sige. So uh Again, so welcome to your second week, and we'll start with um, the first group of your parasites, your, again, protozoa. Okay, and for this part of protozoa, what we're going to focus are your amoebae, amoeba, and your ciliate. Okay, so again, ngano singular ang ciliate, kay? Naratay usa na pathogenic ciliate. Kinsa ganito siya? Valentidium protozoa. Okay, ayan. Dapat tinan ka, ano ha, snappy pag-answer. Okay, huwag na mag-isip. Basta, one, the only pathogenic ciliate and the largest protozoan parasite also that is affecting man is your Balantidium coli. Okay? All right. Ayan. Sige. So, again, uh, before we continue, so we have here again our flow chart, no, of our discussions. Again, and what we're going to focus is your amoebae or your amoeba. Okay? All right. Ayan. Now, uh, your protozoa, before we start the eye, no, your protozoa, again, uh, they exist everywhere, no? Uh, especially in the environment, no? And um, it's considered to be the lowest DAO of the, of, of the so na, lowest form of um, life, no? Muna <laughs> yung sobang resources. Okay, but majority of your protozoa are non-pathogenic, okay? Uh, protozoa, especially in the environment, really are beneficial to the environment, especially that some of them perform photosynthesis, no? Some of them degrade mga organic waste, etc., etc. But, also a handful of them no na mga groups of protozoa that are uh, parasitic okay and what we're after are those that are parasitic so those that can affect man okay so here's a here are example of some of the uh, protozoa na very kanang non non pathogenic so you have here um, diba, you can remember sa inyong second year sa para, sa lab, diba, you performed hay infusion. Can remember mo ato, katong nagkuha mo sa canal water, and then inyong gibutang og jar, and then ang jar na ay katong gibukalan ninyo na kanang grass or something, and then inyong gi-examine, diba, under the microscope, and then you see protozoa. Ayan. So, here example of the protozoa, again, the non-pathogenic lang, no? That can also be recovered from your hay infusion. So, the first one here is uh, your euglena, no? If ka remember mo if na discuss pud siya sa mga examples so euglena is a flagellate for example kabantay mo aning galihok <laughs> it has one active flagellum kani siya diba ka cute and this red one is a chloroplast so it uh, kaning mga green dye, sorry, kay mga chloroplast. So, since it has chloroplast, so it plays an important role in photosynthesis, diba? If you can remember, <laughs> chloroplasts take part in photosynthesis. So, this is Euglena, no? Again, as you can see, very cute, no? <laughs> na siya one flagellum, diba? Kani siya, na gabitay diri, okay? So, it's a flagellate, okay? Next, you have here your rotifer. So, your rotifer, maka-remember mo, um, na siya ciliated tufts uh, sa taas, and it looks like mura siya uh, wheel, diba? That's why ang rotifer, um, yung alang kay rotifer kay in Latin that is um, translated to wheel bearer, meaning nagdala siya og wheel. So sa taas, di ba, so you can see, uh, na siya marag wheel, di ba, how cute. And then of course, lastly, very uh, the most commonly observed protozoa, your paramecium. So your paramecium is a type of ciliate, no? as you can see sa kilid are the cilia na galihok-lihok. Okay, so it's really common. Though this is the most commonly observed protozoa, your paramecium. Okay, all right. So just to give you an uh, a look, no, into the uh, microbe world, especially in our environment. So usually, ma recovering sa environment, no, and they are non-pathogenic. Okay, so your protozoa can be non-pathogenic and or pathogenic. Okay, so we're focusing on the pathogenic uh, protozoa. Okay, all right, ayan. So we'll start first. Again, your protozoa, they are unicellular eukaryotic organisms. Okay, so please take note. Uh, protozoa, no, by the name itself, proto, so one, no. They are one cell, but they are eukaryotic. So we say eukaryotic, diba? They have the true nucleus and upwards like um, organelles, no, with their uh, characteristic membrane and all that. Okay, so I hope na... Tabalo sa difference between eukaryotic and prokaryotic, ha? So, very basic na dapat yan, okay? So, unicellular, one cell sila, uh, but again, they have all the uh, necessary components of the cell, like all the organelles, no? The nucleus talaga, true nucleus, and uh, na, na na nuclear membrane, ganun. And then, of course, um, yeah, katos latanan are other organelles, okay? Ayan. Next, um, they are animal-like protists, okay? Because again, eukaryotic sila, they have... 
all the necessary organelles to function. They don't have a cell wall, of course, because usually your cell wall can be found in your plants. No? Um, yeah, your plants. Okay. And um, it, they have two regions of your cytoplasm, an ectoplasm, which is your outer, and then the endoplasm, which is your inner. Okay. Uh, they contain at least one nucleus, but some may have several uh, nuclei, depending on the type of your protozoa. Okay, all right, ayan. Uh, next, uh, some contain vacuoles. Again, mga additional inclusion sa ilahang cytoplasm. And also, they have special organs for locomotion or for movement. And later on, this is what we're going to... Um, uh, our, our pathogenic groups of protozoa are divided into their different special organs of locomotion. So we'll go into that later. Okay, all right. Now, infective stages for your pathogenic protozoa are your cysts. Okay, please take note. Infective stages, your cysts. Okay, so uh, wala na ko na mention sa introduction the ideas no last week. So when you say infective stages, these are the stages of parasite, no? The stages of parasite, the stage or stages of parasite that infect, no, the host, no, that infect man, okay? And in comparison, you also have diagnostic stages. So later on, natay pang butang ng mga diagnostic stages, ganun. So when we say diagnostic stages, these are the stages that can be recovered no, from the sample, from human sample or from sample submitted to laboratory. Okay? That's the difference. Infective, diagnostic. Okay? Now, your infective stage can also be the diagnostic stages. So example, um, ang amoeba, no? infective stage nila kay cysts. But their, their diagnostic stages pede cysts ug trophozoites meaning kato sila na stages of the parasite can be recovered from your sample okay but the main stage or the main form of parasite that infects the host or that causes infection or that establishes an infection is your cysts okay so muna siya ang, ang sa amoeba okay or say yung protozoa most of the time sorry so protozoa infective stages good usually is the cysts okay all right now vegetative stages no or the feeding stage the motile stage katung laagan na stage this is your trophozoites okay so siya tong tiglihok no siya ang tig move na ko dears ha na ko talaga sinasabi ko talaga cysts and trophozoites uh, are described muna gina describe or is or can be found lang in your protozoa. So if naimu mention gani, naimu mention ng Ascaris cyst, no, or Trichuris trophozoite, nako, my god, ako jung i, mm, nako, <laughs> ako jung ipabalik sa second year or sa first year. Ha, please take note, cyst, trophozoite, sa protozoa yun na sila. Okay? So when you describe helminths, no, helminths, mga worms nato, you don't use cysts or trophozoites. You, you use ova, no, larva, adult, ganern. Pero kung cysts o trophozoites sa protozoa, please take note, ha? Nako, sinasabi ko talaga. Nako, magigigil ako. Okay? Alright? Cysts, trophozoites, tropo sa, sa protozoa na. Sa amoeba, flagellates, ciliates, no? Uh, your coccidians din. Pero again, kung helminths, mga worms, nako, my God, wala, wala na siya cysts o trophozoites. Okay? Ano ra? Larva, adult, eggs, okay? Ay, nako. Alright? Please take note of that. Nako, talaga, pag naadjoy mo post or mo tweet na yun, ah, na, patay dyo. Charot, okay? Alright. So, muna siya, okay? Um, and lastly, of course, most of the time, they require wet environment. So, gusto silang gabasa sila, no? Kisang pwede liganan. Charot lang. Okay, so requires wet environment for feeding, locomotion, osmoregulation, and reproduction. Okay, so most of the time, ang good, ang trophozoites then, uh, not most of the time, but the trophozoites ang mo undergo og sexual, uh, asexual reproduction, okay? Usually binary fission. So, magbulag ra sila, okay? So, ang trophozoites ang mo undergo sa sexual Reproduction, feeding, locomotion po, diba? So that's why they need the wet environment. But as I've mentioned in sa intro, usually mo nang ang imong trophozoites ma-recover sa nyohang malik liquid uh, or watery stool because they like that environment. Okay, mo nilang ganahan. Okay? Alright, ayan. Now, ah, yeah, sige, tama. Okay, alright. Now, uh, we go now again the classification, as I've mentioned, uh, of the groups of protozoa that, that we're going to focus. And again, they are classified according to locomotory organelles. So here we have a table. Letter A is your sarcodina or rhizopoda. That's the name of the group. Um, and under that is, of course, your amoeba. And their organ of locomotion is known as your pseudopodia. Okay, now pseudopodia or yang translation is false feet. Okay, false feet. So nasalai, uh, pseudopodia are extensions of the cytoplasm. Okay, extensions of the cytoplasm. Uh, that again facilitates motion of your amoeba. Okay, so pseudopodia, so mga finger-like extensions. Ayan, they're described as finger-like false feet. Okay, so pseudopodia. Let there be you have mastigophora or your flagellata. The organ is of course flagella. Okay, and your examples, your flagellates. That's our next topic next week. No, the mga jarja. You have leishmania. I, yeah, Lishmania, you have Trypanosoma, yes, sila ng mga uh, flagellates. Okay. Letter C is, of course, Ciliophora or Ciliata. 
by the name itself, your organ is still yeah. So our, our lone example, shout out uh, nag-iisa is your balantidium coli. Okay, and latter D, your sporozoans, they don't have a definite uh, locomotory organelle. Okay, so dira na, sila ang, dira na sila mo under ang silang plasmodium, babesia, you have your coccidian spod, so dira sila, your sporozoans. Okay, alright, ayan. So these are classification according to organelles. So ang, ang A, B, C talaga ang naay definite na organelle. Like you have pseudopodia, you have flagella, and you have cilia. But for sporozoans, they don't have a definite locomotory organelle. Okay? All right. Ayan. So, muna siya ito ang uh, classification according to their organelles. Now, according naman to taxonomy, so we'll start first with you, katong mga phylum, phylum lang. So, phylum ratataman. So, phylum sarcomastigophora. So, meaning, kanisya uh, na phylum, duha ka sub-phylum ang naa. So, by the name itself, sarco. So, ang first is sarcodina, which contains na your amoeba, tanan. And then the second one is mastigophora, which contains your flagellates later. So, they're under one phylum, but ang sub-phylum sila nag-differ. Okay? Alright, ayan. So, you have again, phylum sarcomastigophora, sub-phylum sarcodina. Again, what we're focusing is your um, amoeba. So, your acanthamoeba, endolimax, entamoeba, species, iodamoeba, and of course, negliria. So, kato ato mga amoeba. So, they're under uh, phylum sarcomastigophora. Fora, subphylum sarcodina. The next is, of course, your phylum, a uh, subphylum mastigophora. So uh, it's the other part no, of, sar of phylum sarcomastigophora. So nasa pangalan, di ba? Sarcomastigophora. So gicombine ang duha, sarcodina and mastigophora. They're all under one phylum, pero it contains two subphyla. You have um, sarcodina katunganina, mga amoeba, and you have here mastigophora, the flagellates. So you have the atrial flagellates, meaning those um, flagellates that are reside within your intestines or katong mga wala sa blood. No, you have chylomastix, diantamoeba, jarja, the trichomonas species. And you have hemoflagellates, leishmania, and trypanosoma. And trypanosoma cruzi, wala na butang dire. But again, these are your hemoflagellates or your flagellates. Okay, that's our next topic next week. Okay, next phylum is your ciliophora. Again, usara, si balantidium coli. You have the phylum apicomplexa, okay, which are your sporozoans, your babesia, cryptosporidium, cyclo Cystoisospora, cystoisospora, plasmodium, and toxoplasma. And of course, your intestinal microsporidians, microspora, encephalitozoon, enterocytozoon, uh, pleostophora, nosema, brachiola, vitaforma, and tri tri uh, trachypleistophora. So, kani sila mga, again, microsporidians. All right? So, those are the classification according to uh, taxonomy. Okay, so again, what we're focusing now is again the subphylum sarcodina. Okay, all right, ayan. So please, ano day make the correction, dear? Dili siya class subphylum day siya. Sorry naman. Okay, all right. So for um subphylum sarcodina or rhizopoda, um again they have your protoplasmic processes, extensions of the cytoplasm known as your pseudopodia. Again, and pseudopodia, pseudopods, no, pseudopods, pseudopodia, iyahang uh, translation is false feet, okay? Marasya itsura og tiil, pero di sa tinood na tiil, ayan, pseudopodia, for again, locomotion. And aside from that, iyahang um, life cycle, it contains the trophozoite stage, and then after the trophozoite, may mo siyang pre-cystic, and then the cystic stage, and then the metacystic stage. The metacystic stage usually is the mature uh, cyst, okay? But usually pag ato i-describe ka ron, uh, igo na ng trophozoite og cyst, okay? So trophozoite cyst. But in their life cycle, muni siya iyahang murag stages sa iyahang um, iyahang uh, forms, no? So trophozoite, pre-cystic, cystic, and then metacystic. But again, for para simple atong life, no? Trophozoite cyst ra ito pag-describe later on sa ilang mga uh, morphology and all that. Okay, all right. Now, the most common means, again, whereby um, your amoeba, no? Um, is transferred is through ingestion, okay? So fecal oral, ingestion of, again, infective stage na to, infective cyst in either contaminated food or water, okay? So majority, no, most of your amoeba talaga, they have um, similar life cycle, okay? They follow the same life cycle. So later we'll uh, look into that. But the most common mode of transmission, no, is again ingestion. Fecal oral, uh, contaminated food or water that contains the cyst, okay? All right, uh, yeah. All of your amoeba, um, uh, important, no pathogenic, or those that um, are medically important, they have the cystic stage except for entamoeba gingivalis. So, tanan sila na cyst, si entamoeba lang ang wala. So, si entamoeba, diretso lang na trophozoid. Okay? Wala siya cyst. Um, it inhabits large intestine um, except, again, for entamoeba gingivalis. So, by the name itself, gingivalis, so makita siya sa imuhang mouth. Okay? All right. 
And they are all commensals, meaning again, non-pathogenic. They live in harmony with your body and they do not cause infection except for Entamoeba histolytica, yes. Because again, your Entamoeba histolytica, later also when we discuss um, E. histolytica, is again your true pathogen, the only pathogenic intestinal amoeba. So later we'll discuss that. Okay, all right, ayan. Now again, um, for your amoebic nuclear structures, no? So um, para mas maka later, kaya nga mutang i-mention na yung ani na ngalan, ilang mga nuclear structures, para at least naman ma magets gets ninyo. So the first nuclear structure is your karyosome, also known as karyosomal chromatin. So it's a central mass of chromatin than nucleus. So usually sa nucleus, later, no? Na I circle and then I tunga na dot, okay? And that's your karyosome. So it's a chromatin, no? Um, so still part of the nuclear structure. So ilang apart sa ilang uh, nucleus. Okay, so karyosome, also known as karyosomal chromatin. We also have peripheral chromatin. So this is the chromatin that na surrounds the karyosome. Okay, so karyosome is katung dot material, parang dot. Okay, at the center of the nucleus, pwedeng center ba of the nucleus, and then surrounding the nucleus is your peripheral chromatin. Next, you have the chromatoid bars or chromatoidal bodies. Now, chromatin gya po niya pero pero siyang uh, yung itsura kay pataas, no? Uh, square or round-ended na mga structures. Basta mga bars, okay? And usually, makita natin siya sa mga cysts, no? Young cysts. Um, and uh, usually, pag mature na siya, mawala na siya, okay? Alright, so chromatoid bars, chromatoidal bodies. And lastly, your glycogen mass, by the name itself, glycogen mass is parang an inclusion or an area in the cytoplasm kung asa na ang stored food, okay? Uh, again, found in young cysts, so glycogen mass. So by the name itself, glycogen, diba? So it's form of stored sugar. So again, pwede siyang stored food, okay? Alright, so kanisla, again, muna siya itong ginagamit po for identification of the different species of your amoeba, okay? So we're, we'll look into these nuclear structures. And usually, ang nuclear structures sa amoeba found in the cyst are also uh, similar to those na ma-find sa ilang trophozoite, okay? So kung sa ilang nuclear structures, usually uh, na makitaan sa inyong uh, cyst, mupod ang sa trophozoite. But nare mga ginagmay na mga changes. Example, chromatoidal bodies, no, glycogen mass, wala na sila sa trophozoite, okay? Uh, because again, usually makita ng sa cyst, okay? But your karyosome, peripheral chromatin, naaragya po na siya sa trophozoites, okay? All right. Ayan. Okay. Now, uh, we go now to the life cycle as I've mentioned. No, your love, 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 love. Life cycle, as I've mentioned, they are all similar, no, to your intestinal amoeba. Um, the most common mode of transmission, as I've mentioned, ingestion of infective cysts in your contaminated food or water. Your trophozoites, as as I've also mentioned last week, they're very sensitive, very susceptible to the environment the, of the host, no? And because of that, they are not usually transmitted to humans. Okay, once ma, mu pass out, or once um, mugawas na ang trophozoites sa host, Ma destroy na gitsala after pila ka uh, minutes or after some time. Okay, so dinagyo siya, unlikely na gitsala ma transmit to your humans. Okay, now you have two processes. You have excistation. So by the name itself, excistation. So mugawas siya from the cyst. The cyst then becomes your trophozoite. So mo convert siya to trophozoite. And usually this happens in the area of the intestine. Now, di ba? As uh, sa infect sa uh, ano sa mode of transmission or sa life cycle sa amoeba ang makuha sa hosts or makuha sa humans kay ang cyst okay so pagkaon sa cyst sa patient no so of course the cyst is very um, uh, it has a protective uh, wall no so it can withstand the environment so once mabot ang cyst sa large intestine where the environment is favorable uh, dili kayo siya na naka harsh so mo transform na ang cyst to your trophozoite okay and that's in the process of excistation. Now, of course, in contrast, your encystation, the trophozoite then becomes a cyst. So it happens again when the environment becomes unacceptable. So na mga pH changes, no, na ay um, harsh environment, no, na ay mga kulang ng nutrients, whatever. But again, it's a way of protecting, no, it's a way of protecting the um, amoeba from 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 dying because again, ni transform siya balik into a more um, resistant na form, and that is your cyst. Okay, so usually. Ang, ang, trop, ang, sana, ang life cycle sa amoeba or ang morphology mag-change change from one another uh, from one to the other. So example, from cyst to trough, trough to cyst. So inanarag yun siya, ang iyahang uh, morphology. So again, uh, depending on the environment na ki, um, subject siya. So if favorable ang environment, mahimo siyang trophozoite. Pero if dili favorable, favorable ang environment, like harsh ang environment, may mga changes na dili niya kaya pa, 
mahimo siyang cyst. So, sana oh, sana pwede maging cyst para kaya ko na to. Charat. Okay, alright, ayan. So, existation and cystation. So, that's the life cycle. But again, the, the, the gist, bottom line, Life cycle is similar to all intestinal amoeba. Very straightforward. No, so here we have your life cycle. No, um, again, very derecho lang ba? Like straight ragit ka ayo. No, pag gawa sa patient again cysts or trophozoites. So those are the diagnostic stages. Meaning, pwede nis lang makita sa sample. But the main um, infective stages, of course, your cyst. So bali ang life cycle very straightforward. Makaon mo ang cyst derecho na sa intestine causes infection. Then, mo pass out na po o trophozoid cyst, makaon sa lain, and then the life cycle goes on. Ganun. So, hindi na siya ka-straightforward. Hindi siya complicated. No? Hindi na siya kailangan og host. Hindi na, uh, na siya kailangan og laing host or intermediate host. No? And hindi na siya kailangan og anything else. Alright? Okay. Alright. And but, you know, we, we have mechanical vectors that can uh, facilitate the transmission. You have flies, no? House fly. Pwede po cockroaches, no? Uh, that can transmit from one uh, host to another. Okay? Mechanical, uh, mechanical vectors. Okay, all right, ayan. So that's the life cycle, no? Again, that's very similar to all intestinal amoeba. Okay, all right, ayan, sige. So again, um, for cysts this time, no, we look into their uh, uh, morphology as cysts. Again, as mentioned, the cysts is non-motil. Uh, the cysts are non-motil. It's the non-feeding non -feeding stage, but this is your, again, infective stage of the amoeba, no, the intestinal amoeba. So, kani ang maka in establish o infection or muni siya ang if makaon sa host, no, kay makakos na og infection. Okay. Next, again, frequently found in formed stools, di ba? Because again, they like it there. Uh, and, um, uh, because wala na yung water, di ba, ang stool. So, therefore, uh, not conducive for trophozoites. So, it can lead to um, and cystation. So, mahimu siyang cyst. So, that's why makita siya sa formed stools. And again, as mentioned, you can also see it in fresh condition by using your D. Antonis iodine stain, di ba? Um, in your direct fecal smear. The D. Antonis iodine usually is uh, primarily used for the visualization of your cysts. Okay? But di ba, recall, your iodine can kill your um, trophozoite. So, that's why if magamit tag um, iodine staining, dili na to makita ng trophozoites. Kay, namatay na siya. Okay, all right. But again, as mentioned, the more satisfactory method is the permanent stain smears using iron hematoxylate or again trichrome. Pwede po. Ayan. So again, here's an example of your cyst. As you can see, there's the ba. Muni siyang nucleus, kadi mga circles, and then the center muni siya ang karyosome. Okay, your karyosome, which is again a chromatin japo na material. And then surrounding the chromatin is your peripheral chromatin. So bendan yung peripheral no, uh, nasa sa kilid or its surrounding peripheral and then we also have here a chromatoidal bar or chromatoidal bodies diba again still a chromatin material na nag fuse together na na form siya og bar or bodies okay all right and so that's the um appearance of the cyst usually they're also uh, they are spherical they are round no or oval but depending on the species na ubang species na mo exhibit og other shapes okay but generally they are spherical or oval okay so that's your cysts next uh morphology or your stages or trophozoites your trophozoites again are motil so sila ang feeding stage kasi since motil man sila so pwede siyang makalaag laag no so pwede siyang uh, maka search for food ayan so feeding stage and this is your vegetative stage so again dili siya maka cause of infection because again di po siya maka survive outside hence dili siya <laughs> ma transmit to humans okay it yung purpose ng good is for feeding stage for mo uh, for locum uh, makalaag siya no makakita siya food Okay, all right, ayan. Now again, because again, it requires wet environment, yahang ganahan na consistency of stool, diarrheal, or liquid stool. Okay, and again, as mentioned, amoeba excreted as trophozoites outside na, it cannot uh, mature as cysts. Because again, once they're outside, they're very sensitive, no? Diretso na, pwede na silang uh, ma-disintegrate or ma-destroyed after pila ka minutes or after some time. Okay? All right. And here is your, again, trophozoite. As you can see, pseudopods, no? Which is their form of uh, locomotion, locomotory organelle. And then, as you can see, nagya po ng karyosome, but nangawala na itong uban, katong chromatoidal bodies, no? Iyahang glycogen mass, yan. And of course, um, iyahang cytoplasm, we can also see katong iyang mga gipang kaon, no? Kung sa mga iyahang gina-ingest, yes, or nabay mga bacteria, nabay debris, nabay RBCs, WBCs na makitaan. So, those also are important in identifying sa species, sa amoeba. Okay? Alright, ayan. So, that's for their um, 
stages, the cysts and your trophozoites. Again, ha, emphasize cyst trophozoites. Makita na yun na sa protozoa. Wala na siya, di na siya makita. <laughs> Please naman, di na siya makita sa yung mga helminths. Okay? Alright, ayan, sige. Now, if your organism is entamoeba, entamoeba or your true amoeba, makakita kag peripheral chromatin, okay, in both the trophozoite and cysts, and chromatoidal bodies in the cyst. Okay? So, if ang imuhang genus kay entamoeba, okay, then you can see peripheral chromatin in both your cysts and trophozoites, but uh, and chromatoidal bodies in your cysts. Okay, kung magnegawas niya sa boards ang question kay which of the following is a true amoeba? So katu mga nai entamoeba ang alan. Okay, all right. Whereas we have also other um, um, amoeba species na endolimax or iodamoeba. These are your uh, these are your other amoeba. They don't possess any peripheral chromatin or chromatoidal bodies. Okay, so at least makabalo na ka na, ah, okay. If makakita ako organism na inani, hindi ko kakita sa peripheral chromatin or sa chromatoidal bodies, then this could be endolimax or iodamoeba. But if makakita ka, no, o peripheral chromatin or chromatoidal bodies, then that could be entamoeba. Okay? So peripheral chromatin, both cyst and trophozoites, sa entamoeba, makitaan, and chromatoidal bodies sa cyst only, sa entamoeba. But kung endolimax or iodamoeba, wala kayo makita ang peripheral chromatin or chromatoidal bodies. Okay? Alright. So, that's part of their characteristic. Okay? Alright. So, that's for um, your um, entamoeba, true amoeba, and endolimax or iodamoeba. Okay. Alright. So, uh, before we proceed to our first uh, species, Nagyud, and again, are very important, entamoeba is lithica. Do you have any questions, dearest? All right, so reminding you the atong scoreboard, yes. So nag start from the start again for this lecture. Okay, so wala pa mo kay question so far, no? So laban lang ta, no? Yes, carry, carry pa. Okay, all right, sige. So um, we'll continue now with your first species. Again, your Entamoeba hisulitica. And again, the most important. Okay, if, do you have questions? Naik mo question? Or what? Okay, all right. Sige, okay. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Sir, regarding for uh, Intamiba gingivalis, sir, baka nung, it is still considered true uh, amoeba, sir, no? Maski wala siya eh, kung mm. anong other form na gihat tag? Yeah, in a way, oo. Kaya kasi ang name kay still is Entamiba. So, ang Entamiba, imo siya, ang, ang translation sa Entamiba na word is true amoeba. Okay. Um, although na siya, well, na siya cyst, no, but it's still sa so trophozoite niya, Japan na Japan siya makit ang peripheral chromatin, na Japan kay makit ang um, yeah, peripheral chromatin, kaya umadya siya cysts. Okay. So um, based on that, no, na Japan siya, it, you can still consider it as a true amoeba, but it's not a true pathogen because again, de ba, it's only a commensal. Okay. So there's a difference between a true amoeba and a true pathogen. Okay? Alright. Ayan. Sige, sige. So, uh, we'll continue na. Okay? Or, na ba may other chica? Uh, question? Chica. Other questions? Okay. Alright. Ayan. Sige. So, for Entamoeba Isolitica, again, we'll continue na. Your Entamoeba Isolitica was first described by Losh or Loesh. Losh, Loesh. Na yung resources na ay uh, L-O-E ang spelling because ang O day dapat diri dears kaya katong na ay diuresis na iduwa ka dots sa taas. Okay? So, I think this is a German the guy, the person. Anyway, so it was this, he, was, he discovered it in Russia, okay, uh, from a patient with dysenteric stools. And ang yung gibuhat pag yun is, pag niya sa cyst, yung gi-inoculate sa dog, and then na-discover na niya na after yung inoculation sa dog, kay nagkaliba nga po ang dog, so luwi kaayo as in. So muna ko nabasahan, no? But dito siya naka-first, uh, dito siya na-first discovered. But si Loesh, or si Losh, wala niya gi-consider ng brag something important to no so loy kayang iro but anyway ayan so that's your uh, the first i can say naka discover si loesh um again as mentioned the only pathogenic intestinal amoeba their true pathogen okay so siya good ang once ma makaon sa patient ang cyst sa entamoeba isolitica then most of the time um mo exhibit yung chag symptoms okay so that's why it's considered to be the only pathogenic intestinal amoeba okay again infective stage mature quadrinucleate meaning four nucleus quadri four nucleate nucleus mature quadrinucleate cysts but there are some cysts of amoeba uh, of entamoeba isolitica na pwedeng dili four nuclei no dili pa mature pwedeng one or two nucleus lang or nuclei and according to uh, Garcia and Bailey pwede na to siya maka-infect pod okay but majority good um, important is dapat four ang nuclei para mahimo siyang mature okay and that's its infective stage mature quadrinucleate uh, cyst and the mode of transmission, again, similar with the rest of your amoeba, intestinal amoeba, pathogenic man or dili, is the ingestion of food and water, 
food or water contaminated with the cysts. Okay, so muna siya yung life cycle. As you can see, again, ingestion. Pero mas elaborate lang iyang life cycle because pwede siyang mu invade og other, organ other, other organisms, other organs. Okay, so pwede siyang um, mu metastasize or pwede siyang, again, mas spread to other organs. Okay, all right. And again, still it follows existation. May mo siyang trophozoite. And again, as mentioned, trophozoite ang mu multiply. Okay, siya ang mu divide into different forms. And then, of course, again, if the... Uh, environment is unfavorable, pwede siya mo convert balik to cysts, di ba? And cystation, and then the cycle goes on. Okay? Alright, ayan. So, muna siya yung life cycle. Again, ang difference lang from the other um, intestinal amoebas na life cycle, kay pwede siyang mo uh, spread to other organs. Okay? Pwede siya mo disseminate. Alright? Okay, ayan. Sige, that's entamoeba histolytica. So, for pathogenesis of entamoeba histolytica, so, Ginoon sa niya para maka-establish ang infection. It is discovered that your entamoeba histolytica can directly lyse your host cells. So usually sa mucosa of your intestine, okay? And because maka-lyse sila og host cells, it can cause tissue destruction. So I cell lysis, tissue necrosis and damage to the extracellular matrix. So nasa pangalan na daan, di ba? Histolytica. So histo tissue Lytica lysis. So, pwede niyang i-lyse ang tissue. Histolytica. O, di ba? Okay. Nasa pangalan na, di ba? Histolytica. Okay. And um, your trophozoids usually, sila ang makakos, ani. Of course naman. Because your cyst, di ba? They're non-motile, di ba? And wala na sila, ano ba? Like, mura na sila dormant stage sa imuhang um, amoeba. So, of course, para makakos ka o lysis of cells, kailangan dyan na ay mura something moving. Okay? And that is your trophozoid. So, what they do is they adhere to your target cells, sa mucosal cells, no? Sa imong intestines. And then, ilang can on. And then, mucos na silang changes sa cells, no? Uh, sa surrounding cells, sa imuhang mucosa. Kailangan magkaon ang cell, phagocytosis, and then cytopathic effect na. Okay? And then, what they do is, ila dyong i-muburo sila ba? Ilang mu... Pwede, pwede siyang mu go deeper, okay? Sa imuhang intestine na tissue, okay? That's why magkakos siya mga ulcers, no? Colitis, etc. When we go to your uh, diseases. Okay, all right. Now, invasive strains of EHIS, pag yun, they are resistant to complement mediated lysis. Ayan, ano kayo question Okay, we're talking about complements. IS, okay. Complement system, again, no? So, this complement protein is considered the parang diri, diri ang point of... Um, con point of convergence sa tulo ka complement systems meaning kani siya na complement protein makit an sa tanang complement systems unsa man to siya nako ako mga IS students diyan okay complement system C4 C4 okay C4 ba it's the point of convergence no kani siya tanan kanina katana di ba you have three complement systems you have uh, classical you have alternative and you have the lectin uh, pathway. Now, kanina sila tulo ka complement systems, mo converge sila at this complement protein because common sila sa tulo. Makitaan siya sa tulo ka system. C3. Your C3. C3, sir. Okay. Very good. Your C3. Okay. Saan ito na block? J ba? J o... Tama ba? J? J? K po, sir. A o J. Okay. K. Tama. K and J. Mura. <laughs> or napa si ano ikaw zen sa to l sir coming early sir j okay sige sige perfect l miss i l dai mo sorry sorry okay ayan paki clarify naman okay okay very good that is correct so complement system in your dears hopefully na mention or na discuss na again your complement system is one of the ways how your um, body fight off infection no and usually that's part of your uh, innate immunity. Okay, so and ang ilahang overall, ang overall result of your complement system is ano man, cell lysis. So yung buslutan ang imuhang cell. Okay, but for entamoeba basolitika ang invasive strains niya, dili, um, dili ano sana, dili siya ka, dili siya madutlan sa complement. Okay, so pwede siyang maka evade sa imong immune system. Okay, all right. Ayan kamo sa tong IS Jan. Okay, all right. Ayan sige. So that's for your pathogenesis. Okay. Um, aside from that, also we can see key uh, mga virulence factors. So please take, well, please appeal amoeba poor dears. So lana ko na right and kaning gal gal na collecting. Okay, all right. So again, when we say virulence factors, these are factors. No, these are characteristics or mga secretions ba, uh, morphology or whatever sa muhang organism that could uh, facilitate. No, it could facilitate the organism spread. It could facilitate the organism's um, intensity or severity of um infection okay so sa bacteria na put sila 
own virulence factors nila, di ba? And of course, for entamoeba isolitica, you have cysteine proteases. So cysteine proteases, these are enzymes, of course, that can destroy or that can degrade your mga proteins, no? So because pwede niya ma-degrade ang proteins, pwede po siyang uh, makaspread to other areas. So example, sa mukhang mucosa lining, nagkang proteins did to, no? Um, Napunta sila yung cysteine proteases, ang amoeba na i-degrade, no? Iyahang i-degrade ang hemoglobin para makuha niyang iron did to, di ba? So, ina na siya ka-grabe, charot. Then you have also amoeba pore, by the name itself, it's a pore um, inducing or mag-create mga pores, no? Mga buslot uh, sa mga proteins, diya po na yung makita sa mga polysaccharides, etc. So again, para mas mu-facilitate siya o uh, spreading, no? Or para mas mu-facilitate sa yung infection, okay? Alright, and this gal, gal na collectin is again, what the, what entamoeba is ka use to adhere to their target cells, okay? And because again, it's a lectin, so mu interact siya with the mu mucin, okay, mucin na ma-found sa imuhang colon, okay? And mag-interact sila, so pwede may tabo is, again, maka-establish siya, ug, um, habitat there, or pwede niyang, pwede siya mutapot dito. So once matapot na siya sa cells, dito na siya, magpadayo na siya, ug, destroy sa cells, okay? Using this lectin, your gal, gal na galactose and acetyl D, galactosamine lectin. Okay, all right, ayan. So, di ba kaning N acetyl D galactosamine? This is the sugar man of ano? Unsa kaning na blood type? <laughs> oh my God, blood bank. Unsa ni siya makita? N acetyl D galactosamine A, sa sure. blood blood A. Tama, very good. Sa blood type A. Okay, all right. So again, um, this is your virulence factors of your um entamoeba uh, histolytica. Okay, all right, ayan. Now, uh, after adherence, so after niya mutapot, no? Um, yan ang i-destroy ang host cells. And usually, it's described as um, in a process known as trogocytosis. So basically, ang gibuhat sa amibag yun is mukhaon siya parts, no? Yung <laughs> gumukbang siya <laughs> sa imuhang cells, no? Uh, ginagmay na mga parts. So here's an example of your picture. So you have the amoeba and the live cell. As you can see, nagkaon siya, ginagmay sa, sa imuhang cell. And after nibbling, no? That's the uh, translation of trogocytosis, nibbling, nagnibble ka, nagginagmay ka kaon. After nibbling pag yod, what happens is, your amoeba, it then um, dissolves, diba, digests, iyang gamiton, or yang i-express, no, ang mga proteins na found sa imuhang surface, sa surface, sa imuhang live human cell. So, yang i-express sa iyang surface para at least, dili siya, again, <laughs> matab matablan sa imuhang um, complement system because your complement system will think na ah, okay that's part of the body it's part of the normal uh, cells because again naaman ang proteins di ba sa surface sa amoeba after niya gi-eat imo ang normal cell o di ba so ina na siya ka grabe na good okay and of course kati ang gikaon na cell mamatay na kay gipang kaon naman niya di ba so in a way that's a way put of um, the amoeba to evade your immune system para di siya ma tablan sa imong again complement system so after trogocytosis after nibbling no ang proteins surface proteins na nakitaan sa imuhang live human cell, iya pong express no? Yang ipakita sa iyang cytoplasm or sa outside para, again, dili siya makaon or dili siya maapektuhan sa complement system and the other um, ways or other um, immune system uh, parts ni mo. Okay? So, inana siya ka tikasan, charot. Inana siya ka genius. O, di ba? Gikaon na ganit ka. <laughs> Gikaon na imuhang cell. Inya, gi-express pag yun. Gikuwaan pag yun ka o um, gigamit pag yun imuhang proteins para maka-evade from your uh, immune system. O, di ba? Grabe siya kay user. Okay? Alright. So, again, that's trogocytosis or nibbling. Okay? Ang iyahang uh, direct translation. Nibbling, no? Gikaon-kaon ginagmay. O, di ba? Gikaon-kaon na mo ginagmay. Charot. Okay? Alright. Ayan. So, again, that's for your pathogenesis. Now, again, that's how entamoeba usulitica establishes infection. Now, we go now to the types of diseases that it can cause. Okay? Now, for spectrum of disease, um, again, putting different um, situations or different conditions. Uh, pwedeng asymptomatic ang patient and once the patient is asymptomatic, it has a negative or the patient has a negative or weak antibody titer because again, uh, there's no infection, no? So your body thinks na, okay, you're fine. Your immune system, wala na sila nag-fight against it. No? So you have weak um, or negative antibody titer. But again, because um, it's asymptomatic, 
intubation is symptomatic, the patient can still pwede gapon siyang magkalibanga og cysts or naay mga cysts na ma-detect during uh, routine ONP examination. So, naay mga inana na cases, no? In reality po na they think they're fine pero pag physical exam nila, let's say for a job, no? Or for um, compliance sa doctor, whatever. Makita nila na dahil sa amoeba. Okay? <laughs> Alright, ayan. Or other parasites. So, pwede na siyang may tabo. So, usually seen in asymptomatic cases. So, katong mga carriers, no? Di mo exhibit og symptoms. And usually, those asymptomatic patients, they don't become symptomatic po. No? So, um, inanaragudihang situation, inanaragudihang relationship with the amoeba, asymptomatic ragud, no? So, di sila mo cause og infection. Okay. Now, um, incubation time of infection mo vary, but usually it ranges from 1 to 4 weeks, no? So, if ever karon na infected ka sa cyst, nakakaon ka sa cyst, after 1 to 4 weeks, pwede na ka mo exhibit og symptoms, okay? Alright, ayan. Now, um, invasive intestinal amoebiasis, let's say nagka-symptoms ka, okay? It can be divided into four forms or clinical forms. You have amoebic diarrhea without dysentery, meaning nagkalibanga ragyo ka, or you can have dysentery or colitis in which ang ibang tae na nagyoy blood or mucus. You have amoeboma, a formation of a uh, parang tumor-like na uh, granulomatous lesion sa imuhang intestines. And of course, amoebic liver abscess. Okay, when uh, during extraintestinal amoebiasis. Because again, di ba? The most common sites of your extraintestinal amoebiasis is, of course, your liver. Okay, ayan. So, uh, we'll go into those uh, clinical forms na. Okay, so first is your amoebic dysentery and diarrhea. Now, if the patient exhibits symptoms, this is um, the most common symptom. Amoebic dysentery and diarrhea. Magkalibanga ka, no? Uh, it accounts for 90% of the cases. Bowel movement, again, blood tinged na mucus, mucoid bloody, okay? And frequent, no? Frequent usually ang imuhang pagkalibanga. Up to 10 per day, 10 stools per day. Imagina, grabe, no? <laughs> grabe ka. Imong balik-balik sa CR, bang kapuya, okay? Up to 10 per day, okay? So, because 10 per day, pwede kang prone to fluid loss gap po, no? Electrolyte imbalance. So, it's important na if magkalibanga ka na kay electrolyte na imuhang i-replenish imong electrolytes, okay? So, amoebic dysentery, diarrhea, 90% of the cases, na ay blood sa stool, no? And na po mucus. That's why, as I've mentioned, di ba, when examining stool samples, you prioritize your self, charot. Unahin mo ang sarili mo, charot, okay? You prioritize the liquid stools or the diarrheic stools because they may contain trophozoite, especially, especially if the stool contains blood or mucus because that could mean that uh, there is a presence of trophozoites. And diba, if mag-examine ta, bloody mucoid stool, mukha at example from the bloody area or mucoidal area. Because again, there could be a lot of trophozoites there. Okay? So, amoebic dysentery, diarrhea, 90% of the cases. Okay. Next is amoebic colitis. So this is amoebic colitis. As you can see sa, uh, sa surface no, or sa wall of your intestines, you can see mga ulcers there or parang na mga ulceration. And that's the amoeba that's moving the trophozoites. Sila na ang muna siya epekto sa imuhang amoeb amoebic trophozoites na nag nag disintegrate sa cells, nag destroy sa cells. Okay. So ma ang mahitabo kay mag abdominal cramping ka, you have anorexia, fatigue, and diarrhea. Okay, so that's amoebic colitis. And if magpadayo ng amoebic colitis, it can result to amoebic granuloma or amoeboma. So magtubo o uh, uh, growth, no? Na ay mura growth from the ulcer, okay? Uh, and it can be mistaken as a malignant tumor. So pwede siyang ma-misdiagnose as colon cancer. Ganun, okay? So because of too much, no, destroying of cells, mag-form of granuloma, di ba? And granuloma contains mga dead cells, no? Mga fibroid material, etc., etc. So mu protrude siya sa wall of your intestine and becomes a tumor-like. Tumor yung appearance, okay? And pwede siyang ma-misdiagnose as uh, a malignant tumor or colon cancer. So muna siya yung mga uh, diseases, okay? All right, ayan. Um, aside from that, no, uh, again, it causes ulcer. And its characteristic ulcer is described as flask shape. So sa taas is white na siya mouth, no? And apun siya neck. And then sa ilalom kay medyo wide siya. So here's an example of your flask shaped ulcer. So diri nagsugod ang imuhang amoeba o kaon, di ba? And then nagka, dis, nagka deeper siya kaon, no? Or nagka deeper siya og destroy sa cells. And then um, it then... Uh, Trans uh, it ni, ni spread na siya sa mohang inner layers of your tissue. So as you can see, it's characteristic of a flask, no? So base kay large and rounded, and then you have a narrow neck, okay? Na na mouth, okay? So flask-shaped ulcer, okay? And if padayin pag colitis, no? Your ulceration confluent, magtapad-tapad na sila, okay? And then can lead to necrosis of your colon or colon. So mamatay ng tissue sa inyohang colon, okay? Alright, so that's for... um. In 
for intestinal diseases or intestinal symptoms sa amoeba. Okay? So, again, amoebic colitis, uh, amoebic dysentery, diarrhea ang pinaka-common. Amoebic colitis, magka-ulceration sa imuhang walls, intestines. Am amoeboma, no? Nigranuloma formation sa wall of the intestine na mura siyang tumor. Okay? And then, of course, flask-shaped ulcers in histological um, examination. Okay? Sa imuhang amoebic ulcer. Okay, alright. Now, um, of course, if dili siya mapadayon or dili maaga pa ni Mohang intestinal amibiasis, pwede na siyang mukalat sa other organs, okay? And that is now your extra intestinal amibiasis, okay? Now, ang pinaka-common na site is of course your liver, hepatic involvement. And usually, matransmit ang imuhang um, amoeba from the intestines to the liver because of portal circulation sa blood, hematogenous spread. Because again, di ba, naabot na imuhang um, mucosis imuhang amoeba sa mucosa. So, possible na pwede na siyang ma-appeal sa imuhang circulation and your blood circulation mo agi maguna sa liver, di ba? So, portal circulation sa imuhang liver. So, pwede siyang mo establish nag-infection sa imuhang liver. That's why your liver is the most common site of your extraintestinal amoebiasis. And once in the liver, it causes liver abscess. No? So, liver abscess na ay sulod na nana imuhang uh, abscess no? or imuhang uh, liver, okay? Sa imuhang lobe. And the, uh, and the characteristic characteristic uh, characteristic pus or nana is described as thick chocolate brown or anchovy sauce pus. No, so anchovy sauce. If I'm not mistaken, no, pinaganda na version sa ginamos charot ganon. Okay, so anchovy in English uh, in Bisaya is bully now, di ba na fish? If I'm not mistaken, so inana yung appearance. Okay, basa chocolate brown anchovy sauce. So other um organ sa other countries ang ilang anchovy sauce is color chocolate brown. Okay, but I believe anchovy sauce or anchovy paste there is a Philippines or sa Bisaya gud is ginamos. Okay, so yeah. Okay. And then so within those pus again are mga liquefied necrotic na nga matay na tissue no of liver and mga dead cells put okay so thick chocolate brown na pus okay na amoebic liver abscess of course magsakit imo ang upper right quadrant area and eye tenderness so pag touch nimo kay medyo soft or medyo medyo na ay uh, medyo hard medyo soft ang imo ang pagtouch no tenderness sa liver area and sa lab leukocytosis high ALP levels and sa imo ang pag examine sa radiologic like CT scan or x-ray, elevated ang right diaphragm. Kaya meaning, ni enlarge mong liver, no, pwedeng ni saka imuhang diaphragm put. Okay? So, uh, muni siya imuhang ginalantaw for amoebic liver abscess. Usually, makitaan yun ang liver abscess sa imuhang uh, radiologic examination like CT scan, x-ray, kaya makita yun sa liver na naay something na uh, abscess, na murag buslot or na murag uh, necrotizing tissue there. Okay? Alright. So, muna siya imuhang um, amoebic liver abscess. Again, found in the liver because again, liver, the most common site of your extra intestinal amoebiasis. So, here's an example of your chocolate brown pus, no? Anchovy sauce pus. Masyag chalky. Charot, okay? Diba? At least siya chalky kaya medyo dark ang chalky. Pero, diba? Lami siya lang taong charot, okay? And again, this contains, again, mga necrotic tissue sa liver, mga dead cells, okay? And here's an example of your amoebic liver abscess. So, as you can see, diba, na adyo uh, clearing, no? Gibuslutan na yung liver. And usually, kanin sa sides, sa margin, sa margin of margin of the abscess, dira makitaan ang imuhang trophozoites. Because again, kabantay mo, dear Shamar, from the center, padulong sa sides, di ba? So, from the center, ang center, wala na na yung mga trophozoites. Kaya galihok man sila, padulong sa sides. So, mas makoncentrate sila sa slide, sa sides, okay? So, sa side of the margin, if imunin siyang kuwaan o sample, makitaan ni mo ang live trophozoites, okay? Alright, that's for um, extra intestinal amoebiasis sa liver. So, amoebic liver abscess, chocolate brown pus, anchovy sauce pus. Okay, alright. Ayan. Next, um, other sites, pwedeng sa pulmonary amoebiasis Japan. Pulmonary amoebiasis happens if gikan Japan sa liver. Nagnana sa liver, from there, ni transfer siya sa lungs. Okay, because again, of portal cir uh, circulation, sa blood, no, hematogenous spread. Um, and, ang imong characteristics sputum is chocolate brown pa rin. So, mara siya chalky. So, same atong pus, no, pero sputum lang sa luwa. Okay. Now, if the brain is involved or ma-involve ang CNS, it causes secondary amoebic meningoencephalitis. So, secondary lang siya, no? Second choice, option na siya. Okay? So, secondary amoebic uh, meningoencephalitis. Kaya ang primary, kinsa ganito mga cause sa primary amoebic meningoencephalitis, your, which is yeah. our topic for this brain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nigleria your nigleria foliary. Very good. So, involvement of the CNS uh, for amoeba and amoeba isolitica is 
secondary amoebic meningoencephalitis. But for, for primary amoebic meningoencephalitis, that is caused by Nagleria foliary. And of course, um, as I've mentioned, the entamoeba lutica can also be transmitted sexually, especially during um, anal practices, no unprotected anal uh, intercourse, sexual intercourse. You have, again, pwedeng create ug mga ulcers sa glands, sa head of the penis, and sa prepuce or sa foreskin. Ayan, so head of the penis. So here's an example. So pasintabi sa mga kumakain dyan or maka disturbing images. So na ulcer sa head sa penis. Okay? Alright, because again, of unprotected, no? Uh, anal sexual uh, practices. Okay, so major jutes ang sa picture. Charot. Okay, all right. Ayan. So again, sa head or sa foreskin. So kanisa lang mga discoloration. Muna na siya ang ang cause sa imuhang amoeba. Okay, all right. Sa imuhang trophozoites. All right. Okay. Ayan. Okay. So that's for um your uh spectrum of disease. So before we proceed to diagnosis, dears, yes. Any questions uh, so far? Okay. So mga mahilig dyan ha, ng mga, you know, uh, sexual practices dyan ha, make sure to be safe talaga, be protected. Okay, baka, because you can get a lot of diseases. Alright? Okay. Ayan, sige. Yes, any uh, clarifications, dears, before we continue? Okay, alright, again. Most common site of your extraintestinal amoebiasis, gani? What's the answer? Liver. Okay, your liver. Okay, all right. Ayan. Again, um, the organism na dili maka survive o uh, storage in mong blood bags kay Bugnaw? Treponema pallidum. Okay, very good. Your treponema pallidum, so species pallidum, causative agent of uh, syphilis. Okay, all right. Very good. Okay, all right. Sige. So we will now consider to your... Again, uh, diagnosis. Okay. So for the first method is, of course, the standard ONP examination. So when you say standard ONP examination, the dears, again, uh, that means direct fecal smear, concentration techniques, and permanent stain smears. Okay. All right. So munisha ang recommended procedure, especially if your, your patient is experiencing intestinal amoebiasis. Okay. For the demonstration, identification of entamoeba histolytica in your stool samples. Standard ONP examination. Next, you can also use sigmoidoscopy specimens. No? So, mukha ka sample from your sigmoid colon. And at least six areas of the mucosa, kuha ka sample. And then you make a smear out of it. Okay? And of course, stain Japan with permanent stains. Diba? With your trichrome ba or hematoxylin, iron hematoxylin. Next is, of course, if liver abscess for um, amoebic liver abscess, extraintestinal amoebiasis, the definitive diagnosis is aspiration. Okay? You aspirate from your liver, from the abscess, and then na kay makitang uh, trophozoites there. Okay, so that's a uh, definite definitive diagnosis of amoebic liver abs abscess. Liver aspirate, okay, and examine liver aspirate for the presence of your trophozoites or your amoeba. Okay, all right. Aside from that, you can also perform culture, and here are some of the culture media that you can use the Bowick and Derbolav, NIH Polygenic Media, Craig's, Nelson's, Robinson's, and TYI S33. The TYI TYIS 33 dears ang pinaka specific for entamoeba islitica. Okay, so special medium gid siya nagigamit or gi manufacture for entamoeba islitica. O di ba? So very special. Your TYIS 33. Okay, all right. So culture. But again, as mentioned, culture in para is not routinely performed. No, again, this is performed only for mga further testing, for specialized testing in mga research labs. No, in mga reference labs but in routine hospital labs again culture and para culture for parasites is not routinely performed okay all right ayan uh, next is of course serological testing no serological testing we then test for uh, the the patients no the patients antibody or immunological response uh, but again this is rarely recommended unless the patient has true dysentery because Sa specimen pa lang na, ni mo daan, stool sample, if the patient really has dysentery or amoebic dysentery, makita na ni mo ang trophozoites, okay? Or mga uh, amoeba dito, okay? But in cases of extraintestinal amoebiasis, uh, most of the cases in extraintestinal amoebiasis, dili makitaan no, ang amoeba, trophozoites, or cysts sa imuhang stool, no, 60%. That's why it's more relevant if we use serological testing. So we test for the patient or the host's immunologic response against the amoeba. So either antibody batong i-test or antibody. Antigen. 
Okay, all right, ayan. So for the serological tests, it can include, you have the indirect heme agglutination test, no? Um, a serum with an antibody titer of uh, greater than or equal to one is to 256, or a titer of 256 and above, uh, is diagnostic of amoebic liver abscess, kung indirect heme agglutination test. Pero kung indirect fluorescent antibody test, the serum antibody titer is lower. If greater than or equal to 200, diagnostic siya amoebic liver abscess, okay? So ayan, mga serological tests, Na to, no? Different types of agglutination, different types of labeled immunoassays. Yes, na remember po ba niya? No, when you say indirect um, heme agglutination test, so may pasabot na indirect. Na remember po ba? Shocks. Indirect heme agglutination test. Sige. Let's see. If na po ba na remember? Indirect heme agglutination test. Hala, yes? Okay. Or indirect agglutination na lang. So what does that mean? Kung indirect agglutination ang test. OM, okay, alright. So recall, di ba? Kung indirect agglutination, ang mahitabuan na is, ang imuhang reagents, okay, example, latex particles or what, gikochag antigens, okay, gikochag antigens na not normally found or not naturally found on your latex particles, di ba? So example, sa latex particles, nibutang kaog, mga antigens sa surface. Okay, pero these antigens are not naturally found on the latex particles. Imo siyang gibutang dito. Okay, hala yes. And by the name itself, heme agglutination, so ang atong gigamit na particles kay RBCs. ba? Okay, sige. Review, review sa atong IS. Yes, okay, kamusta tayo dyan? Okay, and of course, indirect fluorescent antibody test, so washing. So meaning, imo sang gipariak daan ang imuhang uh, antibody with your um, antigen, okay? And then imong giwash to remove the unbound um, antibodies, and then after, you then add a fluorochrome, diba? Diba, katong antibody coated, or na, antibody Japon siya, AHG, diba, na naay fluorochrome as the label. Okay? Yes. Sana, oh my gosh, sige, re recall lang, remember, remember, review on your um, aglut um, sana IS procedures, dearest. Okay? Alright, so those are for the first two, indirect hemagglutination test, indirect fluorescent antibody test. Next, you have the latex agglutination test. Again, it uses latex particles, agglutination, um, and of course, your ELISAs, your enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. And your ELISAs usually have greater sensitivity. Okay, so you have different types, so mga brands ni siya. So first, you have Rida Screen <clears throat> and Tamiba Isolitica. So you detect IgG antibodies. Okay, your Prospect and Tamiba Isolitica microplate assay, it detects Entamoeba Isolitica specific antigens, EHSA and human fecal samples. And next is your e 2 test. I think wala na ako ni na butang dira, dears. Pero uh, pwede rin mo siya, ayaw, ikapi ratanan, okay? Uh, pwede rin mo butang, it's an antigen test that detects um, e histolytica adhesin and ang yang main purpose is you can differentiate entamoeba histolytica or entamoeba dispar and entamoeba moshkovskii from the rest of your entamoeba species. So ang yang uh, pinaka important na function is ma, ma speciate ni mo siya, no? Ma differentiate ni mo ang entamoeba histolytica from the rest of the entamoeba species. Your e histolytica two test. Nsa yang detect your entamoeba histolytica adhesin, which is specific for entamoeba histolytica na antigen. Okay? All right. Ayan. So that's for your ELISAs. These are all ELISAs, no? Very uh, great sensitivity. Okay. All right. And we also have serological tests to detect your SREHP, your serine-rich entamoeba histolytica protein, and galactose-specific adhesin, or ako pag pronounce na kay SREHP, okay? <laughs> Sana all mas SREHP, your SREHP, your serine-rich e histolytica protein, SREHP, <laughs> SREHP, okay. All right. Yeah, ako ni siya gapil kay Marg, nigawas niya sa boards, I think, like unsa ning meaning sa SREHP, or basta something about SREHP, okay? So serine-rich e histolytica protein, SREHP, SREHP, okay? All right. And galactose-specific adhesin. Okay, so mga serological tests. Again, your serological tests can be detecting the patient's antibody or the entamoeba isolitica's antigen. Okay, so again, we're not looking into the demonstration of the entamoeba isolitica trough or cyst sa imuhang specimen, but we're after sa, uh, sa immunological uh, aspect, no? Sa patient's reaction to the to the entamoeba isolitica antibody or the presence of the antigens of the amoeba sa patient's body. Okay? So that's for serological testing. Very useful or very relevant in um, extraintestinal amoebiasis na cases. Okay? All right. Ayan. Sige. And last, there's the, I think, wala na ako ni, ay, sorry, wala pa day. So many mga pictures sa imuhang um, 
um, immunological assays. This is Rida's screen, as you can see. Na microplate, no? Okay. And colorimetric, Japanese shadir, so mo uh, change in color. And this is your prospect. So same, the same, uh, still the same microplate assay. So nasa sa microplate. And then kini mga colors, of course, these are mga enzyme changes, di ba? Colorimetric reaction. Okay. All right. Now kani there's uh, again wala na ako na appeal. Uh, Paki right na lang, no? Um, if histology, no? If histology. Um, you can perform histological diagnosis when you see trophozoites in the tissue. So important niya if kana mga nai mo sabi ulcers, no liver abscess or sa intestine gikan, okay? And we stain that using periodic acid shift, okay? PAS, P A S, periodic acid shift. And the expected color is bright pink ang imong amiba against a background of green blue. Pero depende sa counter stain ni mong gamiton, okay? Because nai uban na counter stain na red, a pink ang background or purple or whatever, depende. And we can also use H and E, no hematoxylin and eosin. Okay, so you don't have to copy tanan dears, but there are na histological done. Um, trophozoites are seen within the tissue. Pass uh, staining uh, ang gamiton, and then expected color bright pink. Okay, and H and E can also be used. So I'll give you time to copy na lang. All right, and here is your example of your pass stain. Um, as you can see, di ba, bright pink, medyo fuchsia na ang color. But again, ang background can differ. In this staining, ang ilang gigamit siguro is um, another type of stain. Okay, dili siya bright, uh, dili ka tong green blue. Okay, all right. So that's your past stain. That's for histology. Okay, uh, again, usually performed if mo send ang mo send sa labog kanang process tissue from the intestine ba or from the liver. Okay, and then is stain siya or i process siya histologically. Okay, so you look for the trophozoites of your entamoeba isolitica. And again, they will, they will appear bright pink. Okay, sige. So I'll give you time to copy na lang. Because it's my fault din naman. Wala na ko siya na-appeal. Sorry, sorry. Okay, alright. Ayan, sige. Okay, okay, not dears or uh, na copy. <clears throat> yes, okay, na or na pena copy. Okay, na sir. Okay, alright, sige. Ako na yung next slide. Okay. Sige, pwede nyo picturean. Again, ako na yung upload ang, P ang sana, PPT ani once we're done sa inyo ang soul. Okay, alright. Ayan, sige, sige. Alright, so uh, we'll now proceed now with the morphological uh, stages, no? Your cysts of entrophozoids of your entamoeba isolitica. So we'll first describe or ato siya i-compare with your entamoeba coli. Your entamoeba coli is again non-pathogenic, okay? Alright, so ato nang i-compare, no? You have your table there. So we'll start first with your entamoeba isolitica na cyst. The size is about 10 to 20 micrometers. The range is 12 to 15. Compared to your entamoeba coli, mas dax si entamoeba coli, yes. Larger than entamoeba coli. Next, you have uh, we look at the chromatoidal bars again. Please take note. Very characteristic, you dears. It's no very distinct for each. Ang entamoeba isolitica, coffin shape, no coffin shape, no medyo rounded ends ang yung chromatoidal bars. Whereas ang entamoeba coli splinter like. So na ay murag um, na ay murag tusok tusok sa end sa yahang chromatoidal bars okay ang entamoeba coli but for entamoeba isolitica smooth siya na round round ended or coffin shaped okay coffin shape marshag lungon okay all right ayan next you have mature cysts sa entamoeba uh, isolitica kay 4 but for coli is 8 okay peripheral chromatin please take note fine uniform granules evenly distributed that's for entamoeba isolitica. Um, for coli, is coarsely granular, clumped, and unevenly arranged. As you can see, diba, opposite, opposite lang. For cariosome, small, compact, and centrally located. Nasa sa tunga. Okay? But for entamoeba coli, large, no, may or may not be compact, and centric, eccentric, meaning wala siya sa tunga. Medyo, um, 
na move siya from the center. Okay, wala siya sa center. Okay. And last, you have glycogen, diffuse, uh, maybe absent again in mature cysts. Because again, young cysts na makitaan ang glycogen mass. Diba? So, nigawa sa yung pretest, diba? Gidescribe ang entamoeba histolytica. Basta gani, dear cysts or trophozoites, ang description kay fine, uh, uniform, uh, granules, no? Evenly distributed peripheral chromatin, central cariosome, ganern, coffin shaped chromatoidal bars, press the buzzer, can't tell me by Sulitica Guna. Okay, kung i describe mangani. All right? But again, as mentioned ako di ba, ang entamoeba heart Hartmanai, same sila o characteristics, but nag differ lang sa size. So you look into the size, di ba? Size matters between entamoeba by Sulitica and entamoeba heart Hartmanai. Okay? So basta gani, na amoy question sa boards man, sa yung exam, whatever, nag i describe ang amoeba, no? Uh, ang question kay an amoebic cyst was discovered and um, it it has a fine evenly distributed peripheral chromatin and a central cariosome with coffin shaped chromatoidal bars mag then press the buzzer our answer is entamoeba histolytica but again look into the question then if nice size nagihatag if medyo gamay gamay ang size no then our answer is entamoeba hartmanai pero if medyo ang size kay 12 to 15 or 20 then that is um, entamoeba histolytica. Okay? All right. So that's for the morphology of your entamoeba histolytica cysts. Again, basta ganin na question. Mga fine, evenly distributed peripheral chromatin, central cariosome. Nako, ka na ana na lines, good dears. No? Uh, that's for um, entamoeba histolytica. Na cyst. Okay? All right. So here's your picture. Again, entamoeba histolytica. As you can see, um, chromatoidal bar, di ba? Round edges, round ends, no? And you have central cariosome, nasa tunga yun, marasag mata. And then you have a peripheral chromatin na even, meaning medyo smooth iyahang appearance. Okay? Walay, walay mga bumps, bumps, or dili granular. Okay? Walay mga tibugol, tibugol. Walay granules na nakitaan. Okay? So here's an example of your um, entamoeba histolytica. Again, on sanina stain atong gigamit ani? What do you think? Kaya medyo yellowish man siya. This is using wet mount ni siya. So, atong gigamit na stain kay your so my, ano, yellowish man. So, this is using your iodine. Okay? So, this is iodine stain. So, as you can see, cyst. Uh, this is the nucleus, di ba? And kaning tunga mo ni siya ang cariosome. Okay? The central cariosome. And then, marasag mata, di ba? And then, again, ang palibot niya is medyo smooth. That's peripheral chromatin. Okay? And this is your stain, di ba? As you can see, um, iron hematoxylin. Di ba? Katong mga shades of blue, blue, purple. Ka remember mo? So, again, this is your nucleus. And this is your chromatoidal bars. Okay? So, as you can see, again, medyo round ends. Okay? Round ang ends, no? Ang edges sa imuhang cyst. Okay? All right. Ayan. So, that's for entamoeba histolytica cyst. Again, fine, evenly distributed peripheral chromatin, central cariosome, coffin shape, round ends, na peripheral, uh, na chromatoidal bars. Okay? Ayan. So, muna siya imuhang uh, cyst sa entamoeba histolytica. Next, you have the trophozoite. Still compar comparing with your entamoeba coli. So, again, as you can see, the size, mas dakog yung japo ng entamoeba coli. Pero for motility, as you can see, ang entamoeba histolytica ang mas progressive, no? One direction, one direction, ah. Yes, one di charot. One direction, one direction agit siya mo add to, no? And then, ang imuhang entamoeba coli kay sluggish, medyo hina iyahang motion. So, pwede siyang mo add to bisag asa. Okay? Alright. Now, for entamoeba histolytica, only one pseudopod ang give thrust in explosive manner. So, medyo paspas iyahang pag uh, gawa sa pseudopods. Okay? Alright. Endoplasm, very important. Please take note, diagnostic of entamoeba histolytica dears, it contains RBCs, alright? Ang iyahang cytoplasm. But no bacteria or cell detritus. Wala yung mga uh, uh, from the cells itself or bacteria. But sa nagani RBCs, that's diagnostic of entamoeba histolytica. Whereas for entamoeba coli, endoplasm contains bacteria, yeast, and detritus. Now for uh, staining, if staining mga nucleus at trophozoite, Again, it's not visible, but still the same. Yang chromatin, fine, uniformly sized, no, finely granular, or nigh ground glass appearance. So, muna siya mga characteristics sa entamoeba histolytica dears, cysts or trophozoites, basta mga fine, no, finely granular, no, even distributed, um, central na po, central cariosome. Ayan, di ba? So, muna siya yung i-look into na mga descriptions uh, sa entamoeba histolytica. And if inanang ang descriptions nagihatag sa question, then of course, that's entamoeba. Histolytica. Now, ang trophozoite sa entamoeba histolytica, if commensal ra siya, meaning wala pa siya nag-cause infection, that is known as the minuta minuta form. Okay? Minuta minuta form. Okay? Alright, that's for the trophozoite. Again, still the same sa cyst. Inyong lantawan, fine, evenly distributed peripheral chromatin or finely granular ground glass appearance. 
find centrally located Japo Nakariosum, okay? And very important, very important, the cytoplasm contains RBCs, ingested RBCs. Very diagnostic, diagnostic yun na of entamoeba histolytica, okay? So here's an example, again, in drawing, ingested RBCs, again, central cariosome, even peripheral chromatin. You have here sustain, o diba? So you have the ingested RBCs, central cariosome pa rin, and the nucleus. And you have here the pseudopod, okay? All right, ayan. So... Uh, okay, so for tomorrow, we'll continue with entamoeba dispar. But before we end, dears, I'll show you a video na akong nakuha, no? When I was still an intern sa Galiares. Uh, sa Galiares na ako siya na kuha. Uh, this is a video of entamoeba isulit ka na trophozoite, okay? Um, so, paki ano lang. <laughs> Sorry naman sa, sa noise, okay? I'm not sure if makita ninyo. So, kanin siya, dears, muni siya ang entamoeba isulit ka. Atrophozoid. So, um, just look into it. Diba magliok na siya? Ayan. So, katong, kabante mo itong nigawas, that's the explosive manner sa pseudopods. Okay? And then, muna siya ang galihok na internal structures niya. Okay? And then, makita ninyo na ang pseudopod, mugawas na po na explosive. Like, mukulit na siya gawas gani. Or muna siya, yeah, explosive. No? Ayan. So, this one. This one here is the pseudopod. No? So, as you can see, medyo one direction lang siya. Padulong siya sa left. Ayan. And then, padulo na po sa ilalom. And then, muna yung internal structures. Okay? So, again, as you can see, dili kayo klaro ang unsa nasa sulod. Ayan. So, muna siya mga ingested RBCs niya. Okay? So, di kayo sa sulod. <laughs> ang mas klaro is kailangan sa stain. Ayan. So, this is the pseudopods. Okay. Alright. Sorry, there's na. Muna siya, mga metex na sa, ano, sa section. Medyo kurug akong kamot. Sorry naman. Okay. Alright. Ayan. So, as you can see, that's the inner. No? It's moving. Okay. And again, uh, those are your RBCs and yahang uh, structures put. So, as you can see, dili klaro, di ba? So, mas maklaro ni siya if mo siyang stain. Okay? Alright. Ayan. Ayan. So, that's your entamoeba histolytica na trophozoite. Okay? Alright, ayan. So, um, tomorrow we'll understand also, usually in the laboratory, if you see that, no? If you see that moving, yung mo siyang i-report as entamoeba histolytica slash entamoeba dispar na trophozoite. Because, um, dili klaro mang good, no? You cannot see if na by RBCs or wala inside, okay? But if you really see RBCs inside, you report that as entamoeba histolytica because that is diagnostic of entamoeba histolytica, okay? Alright, ayan. So, we'll talk about that when we go to entamoeba dispar tomorrow. Okay? Alright. So, before we end, Beers, any questions? Nakakita na mo sa video? <laughs> Nakakita na mo sa video? <laughs> okay. Alright. Yes, Matthew? Uh, sir, nakay question, sir. Uh, um, ang RBC niya mo makita sa IHIS, sir, kay Kwan, uh, is it like same ra siya nga Kwan morphology na makita niya sa urine analysis or is it red? Just... Mm. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, Um. I think, ano siya, Beers, Again, as I've mentioned, medyo dili siya klaro if wet mount, no? Pero ang um, ang imo makita magod sa RBCs, di ba? When we examine your um, urine, mas maklaro magod ang RBC gyo dito na naay murag center, central pallor. Now, uh, kanang murag na siya, kanang murag, basta mas klaro siya sa, uh, sa urine. Pero sa ihis magod, because it's inside, I think dili kay siya klaro, no? Um, as long as, ang imo, if makakita kag murag circular dito and sustain pag yun, um, then that is your RBCs. We we then um, interpret that as the RBCs niyang gikaon. Pero mas dili siya, maglahi yung appearance compared sa sa ihi na RBCs and kato yung gi-ingest po na RBCs. Okay, katong akong gi-show na picture, ay katong sa imuhang sa slide, kay ano siya, dears, gidraw rato siya. Okay? So marag mo to siya yung marag drawing, no? Pero in reality, again, medyo di siya clear, no? And uh, mas lahi ang RBCs na makita sa urine compared sa ingested na entamoeba. Okay? Uh, ingested RBC sa entamoeba isolitica na trough. Okay? Alright. Ayan. Thank you, Sige. Okay, Mas. Any questions pa? I hope maka makakita po mo, Anna, when you go to your hospitals. No, Very common din naman. And ang stool atong sample ato is, of course, liquid, diarrheic, daghang mucus. As in, daghang siyang mucus. Okay. Alright. Ayan. Now, um, any questions, dears? Again, um, on sa itong infective stage for your amoeba, most of the time, infective stage? Sis. Okay. Your cysts. Okay? Your cysts. Alright. Okay. And again, on sa itong gidescribe na chromatoidal bars sa shape sa mohang entamoeba histolytica? Coffin. 
shaped. Okay, coffin shaped. Okay, please take note. All right. Tapos sa uh, bacteria na lang last. This bacteria also uh, causes no bloody diarrhea, explosive bloody diarrhea, no. And then iyang kana kanina lang iyang biochem kay it's considered to be the biochemically inert na bacteria. Iyang mga biochem results kay usually negative. Charot, sorry. Ecoli, sir. Ecoli? Biochemically inert? Salmonella. Negative yung biochem? Ha? Ano sa ito, Nick? Salmonella. Salmonella? Vibrio <laughs> color. Vibrio? <laughs> biochemically... Shigella. Very good. Ayan, Ash. Very good. Your Shigella. Okay, please take note. Shigella, biochemically inert bacteria. Most of your uh, biochem characteristics is negative. Okay, diba? Don't forget that. Okay, all right. Sige. So, um, again, um, sa paman to, amoeba, amoeba, amoeba. Okay, infective stage nato is again your cysts. Okay, and again, the most common site of your extraintestinal amoebiasis is? Liver. 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 Okay, very good. And if maabot sa brain, imuhang entamoebiasis ulit ka, again, ang siyang makakos na disease? Secondary, ah, uh, toto. Secondary Sam meningocephalitis. Okay. Okay, secondary amoebic meningoencephalitis. Okay, and complement system, a question, a side question. Again, this protein sa complement system, diri mag-merge tanang tuluka systems? This is your? C3. Okay, C3. Please nito doon tiyo sa C3. Okay, that is why if C3, ang protein na naay deficiency sa inyong complement system, it causes the most severe infection. So if you have complement uh, deficiency, C3 deficiency na complement protein, then severe yung infections. Because again, di ba, dira man mag-merge mag tanang uh, complement systems. So if gamay ito siya, so dili magpadayo ng ubang system. So munang dili siya ka-create o or dili function yung complement systems. Okay? So C3, ang merge or sila, dira sila mag-converge tanan. Okay? Sana na-discuss na sa IS and review lang. Okay? Alright, sige. Any questions, dears, before we end? Okay? Ako na stop ng record eh. Okay? Alright? Yes? Sige. So for tomorrow, we'll continue